Hello, everybody. This is Queen City Q. You can call me Queen or Q for short. I use they, them pronouns, and we talk about pronouns every single time that we stream because it's important by making that part of a regular conversation. We make it easier for people in the gender diverse community to be their authentic selves without having to worry about outing themselves. Um, today, we're going to be talking about everything reality TV with the famous It's Ian Watson from Twitch TV's It's Ian Watson. Um, <laughs> uh, let me just bring them in here to introduce themselves to you. Oh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hi, everyone. This is so exciting. Thank you for having me, Queen. Yeah, no problem. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, so if you do not know, uh, it's Ian Watson. It's Ian Watson is essentially whom I deem the king of cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they play a whole bunch of uh cute variety games and then occasionally play a toxic killer on dead by daylight and slaughter Fun. the masses because balance exactly <laughs> have to have the yin and the yang <laughs> and that's what i try to bring you no yeah. i still try to be cute while toxic though so you know yeah. so i try to keep it up you gotta exactly. keep it up <laughs> um i think the balance for you really comes down to your uh squishmallow collection which um, you may have a couple of. A couple. They're all they're all gifted to me by the kindness crew, which is the my community's name. So it's really cool. Yeah. Um, I actually think we have. Um, I think I have a larger version of one of your smaller ones. Believe it or not. Oh my god. It's a little dragon, except I named mine boyfriend. <laughs> It's so cute. Um, they're all they're, they all take turns being my significant other. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like I just switch it and reverse it. You never know. Okay, Missy. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't know. You didn't know. Now you know. <laughs> um, my favorite, I think, though, um, from what I can see, is either between the seal, yes, grumpy seal, or the hamster. Oh, the hamster is one of the new ones. I, didn't, I didn't think I saw them before. No, they're very new. They were just gifted to me. And um, yeah, they're so cute. <laughs> they're so cute. Uh, BK says her favorite is the cactus. Cute, given to me by Joe Fess. So it's, so it's really cute because like each of them, like I call them by the people's names that gave it to me. <laughs> That's it's really adorable. weird. <laughs> so like Kirby's over there, but he's being blocked right now by the hamster because I didn't place that very well. <laughs> Kirby's a little vampire. It's like so cute. Oh, I can spot that vampire. It is there. I definitely noticed mm. it. Um, <laughs> oh, I guess you can't really see it in the the, the, the box that, that you're in right now. Yeah, but I can see it. Yes, yes. And then it's just like cute because it's all like everyone's personality type and stuff. Okay, I I wouldn't. Well, maybe because I was gonna say I don't really associate a vampire with Kirby, but they are like a little horny with their fangs, so it works. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> no, because we we bonded over the fact that I used to do this really stupid voice on stream all the time. Okay. Um, it was called Blob because whenever I I played Dream Daddy, and when I played Dream Daddy, whenever I read as Damien, I would have to do this voice blah <laughs> at the end of every sentence. I would say Blob just so I could keep the character voice up. We and so we that's did, where it came from. We did Dream Daddy very uh, very recently on my channel as well. Oh, I know. Really oh, I know. Um, I love watching people experience it, but because I watched I played every single one, I try to keep my mouth closed so I could <laughs> just enjoy. <laughs> um it was definitely fun cuz we de we had more than one person, so we had different people voice oh, acting everybody, which if anybody were ever to do that, I think that's ideal cuz you get drained playing uh visual novels by yourself. Um, yes. There's I, one visual novel that I think looks really cute that I've been also interested in playing, but I can't remember the name is right it now. Is Doki yeah, Doki Literature Club? I did just get that. I did just get that. Have you ever done it before? No. Okay, I will definitely make sure that I'm there because it's a moment. I feel like it's, like, apparently, like, perfect, like, me. So I'm like, I'm into it. Um, the one thing I will advise you for those streams they have a trigger warning in that game. Yes. So very, be very mindful because that game does get into some very uh, darker places. Um, yes. With some of the, the character I was development. Informed. 
So, yes. so I'm like, ooh, okay. Um, I didn't know that right off the bat when I played. It I was like, okay, from now on, whenever we stream this, we put a big TW. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I will. No, for sure though, like, cause like I, I have, I, I care so much about mental health in my community, and mm -hmm. because I wasn't sure, I was very thankful that people were like, hey, so when you do play this, careful. Yeah. I'm like, okay, good, 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 good. Yeah. Um, which is good, and I think it's really important that like we be mindful as streamers to like. Yeah, put those trigger warnings and it's really hard because I don't know if you're like me where you like to do um, first playthroughs where you know absolutely nothing going in I don't like to know too much I don't mind like a little hand holding with certain types of games because I'm not great at every type of game but there's yeah. certain games that I get annoyed with like like don't spoil it like Story of Seasons is my baby don't you get spoil it for me <laughs> you know <laughs> I am th is that the one where I'm a cow yeah yeah I'm a cow yeah we're Milky on the daily, baby. No. Mm, and how? Um, <laughs> <laughs> speaking of um, euphemisms for uh, cumin, <laughs> um, uh, have you ever seen? Have you seen BK's photo of you? Oh my he... god, yes! Because it's from my starting soon screen. That yes. I went to the photo shoot where I was like all covered in white was my model moment, but then Kasky drew it and it looked like I had um, cumin all over my face. Yeah, it, I, I probably didn't help that one because I definitely refer to it as your dried cumin photo. Oh my <laughs> god. Uh, well, you know what? It's no lies detected. No lies detected. <laughs> I'm like, it, it looks like it's, it's you You just fin fil finished filming a shoot with uh, yes, exactly. 10 other men if you have no context of it. Because he only zoomed it on your face, and I was like, mm. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's very my Corbin Fisher days or anything like that. And you know why? Maybe it was. You don't know. Um, you don't know. I don't. I'm gonna look. Um, we're gonna go look up uh, porn MD Ian Watson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I feel like I would have like a really like I would try to find a name that I feel like would suit my face, but I wouldn't. I couldn't go by. It's Ian Watson from Twitch.tv's It's Ian Watson. It wouldn't work. It no, and weird. I mean dried cumin's just too on the nose. <laughs> People will know immediately. They'll just know immediately. That's Ian. <laughs> That's Ian. Is that dry cup? That's Ian. That's so gross. Uh, isn't Corbin Fisher like basically a porn reality TV show, but like reality TV? I don't well, watch I, porn enough to know. <laughs> it was like when I was young. I don't. I don't really. When I was younger, that was like my like. Oh, this is a fun sight, and like it was. <laughs> It was more so just like, I don't know, like they were always kind of, they always try to make it seem like it's straight guys hooking up, and I'm like, that part is not part of my fantasy. I don't ever want to hook up with a straight guy. Please, no. Please, no. I don't, Please, no, but I'm busy. I don't have beautiful. time to teach somebody how to do things. I used to want to teach me how to do things. I, I think I'm good at what I do, but my goodness, no ma'am, no ma'am. <laughs> Dude, two people not knowing what they're doing. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are going to talk a little bit about um, reality TV today. Since you uh, are a self-professed um, connoisseur, we'll say. I just am a huge fan <laughs> of competition reality shows. And I've watched so many of them. And I've listened to podcasts. I've talked about strategy. I have imagined myself in that world, what I would do, what I wouldn't do, how I would play each scenario. Just something that just brings me so much joy. Okay. And I used to be like, I'm going to do a reality show. But I'm like, it brings me so much joy. Why ruin this so by doing it? That does lead to my question. Have you ever tried signing up for a competition <sighs> reality TV show or any reality TV show? I was actually in, I got booked on a reality show one time, and it was, okay. um, like, a really weird, like, oxygen TLC kind of one that was going to okay. be more so, <laughs> it's so I'm sorry, okay, so it's basically, like, I was, like, going to be a coach that was helping couples and stuff with their relationships, but I wasn't going to give any advice, I was, um, there was an um, a woman who spoke to angels 
who would give these people advice, and I was there to help them follow the angel's instructions. <laughs> Not a competition reality show, but the paycheck was supposed to be right, but it wasn't. So it all fell through. <laughs> I want to know more. <laughs> It was such a strange situation because I had to also meet the angel. And so um, I met the woman and I spoke with the angel. And I'm going to be honest. I'm one of those people that like, I don't, you, I don't know. I don't know. Anything could be true. You know, I'm like, go with the flow. We'll see. We'll see uh, and stuff. And I'm like in the moment, like digging this. But then now in retrospect, I was like, that was what a trip. <laughs> She would go into, like, a state, and then she would start speaking as the angel. Very hard to understand what she was saying. It was very um, guttural, and her eyes were closed. And I had a journal, and I had to write down things as it was going on. I don't know if I have the journal somewhere. It's just, like, a book from the angels. It's, like, so, it's so funny. And I'm, like, in the moment, though, I'm not going to lie, I was, like, I'm so into this. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, did it just like never aired? Like they did the pilot and that was it or what? So they were working on it, but they didn't actually pay me. Uh, um, cause I had to sign a contract that, um, just signing the contract. I was supposed to get paid cause I wasn't, was a no compete clause yeah. and they never paid me. So I was like, I don't trust these people. So. Hmm. Did you ever try for anything else? Um, so I filmed, because I see Nathaniel, um, my, little, my little baby, saying, submit your Survivor audition tape. I filmed it. I never edited it, and I never sent it in. Because I'm afraid of losing something that brings me so much joy. It brings me so much joy that I don't want to be on it and be like, fucking hate this, or I was the first one out on Survivor. I don't want to be on a vacation with random producers. I don't want to deal with that, you know? So... <laughs> Um, and just, so that was just the two, it was hosting one show and then potentially being on survival, but never actually doing it. I never actually like submitted the tape because I don't know. I, I it's a, it's a, a bad character flaw, but I think I let fear dictate too much of my decisions of like, I don't want something bad to happen. Yeah. But I mean, and then I just don't do it. But then, yeah, you never get to experience it. Right. Exactly. Cause who knows? Maybe you'll love survival more because whenever like. You watch Survivor, you'll be like, no, bitch, you should have done this because you got farther than them. And I've seen every single episode of Survivor. There's 40 seasons. I've seen every episode, and I love it with a passion. I'm just afraid of being cold. That's <laughs> Truly, I'm not afraid of starving. I'm not afraid of people. I'm not afraid of being stinky that's fine whatever <laughs> i'm afraid because i'm 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 an l alien i've all i don't i can't handle the cold i get so cold <laughs> okay at night. so then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna bring him to canada in the right, middle exactly. of winter and then like it'll seem fine oh my god but please get me out of here get me out of here i'll go it's so hot right now <laughs> um so if you could apply for any show though and like you were guaranteed to get in Ooh, guaranteed like, oh my god oh my god a producer was like you have that it factor you're gonna be in a reality <laughs> tv show you're gonna be our star um which tv show would it be I think, oh God, it's so hard because I think my heart goes with Survivor, my, like, who I am as a person or what people see me as, I think is like a big brother contestant. Okay. Because they're very like, hi energy and like, hi everyone, hi America, you should vote for me. And I think people naturally kind of put me there. But I don't know if that's what would make me the happiest because Big Brother has gone down so much the past couple of se past couple many a seasons, okay. and so um, I'm like, shit, I don't want to go on a show that's like really it's it it's you're filmed twenty four seven, mm -hmm. you are w watched twenty four seven. I think I'd be very stressed out with that. So I think I would go with survivor and then hopefully i can go on the challenge after survivor 
Gotcha. MTV is the challenge, yeah. MTV is the challenge. That's the thing where it's just like they take reality TV show contestants and then put yes. them against each other. Yes. And right? that was like one of my first babies. Like I've watched so many things. There was like another um, show on Twitch that was a competition show. Mm -hmm. It was The Weakest Twink. And we had specialty categories, and I picked one of the most specific seasons of the challenge that I know no one has watched other than me. And, God, I was one of the few people to ever get every single question right because I am obsessed with... Really, like, early 2000s reality TV is where it was. I, it's true. Because uh, um, uh, I have my favorite reality TV show from that, like, era... Oh my god um which i love i still love it i love what it did mm -hmm. i hate the main person now love right. them at the time hate the main True. person now um and that was a shot at love with tila tequila right that was such it was so good it was so good and now it's like we can't even enjoy it we because, can't remember we can't enjoy the memories because tila tequila is an awful human being now exactly yeah, but Thanks, Tila, the show was amazing. Uh, so good, so good. That was like literally like prime time reality TV show time. It was just so good. It All had, of the shows. It had everything. It had competition. It had love. It had fighting. It had lesbians taking on straight dudes. It was it, great. Something I never knew I needed until that moment. And then when it happened, I was like, this is what I've been needing. Yeah, when you see a lesbian, like, scream at some straight dude that she's going to throw arms with him. And, like, you're like, she'll take you. <laughs> oh, you know it. You know it, too. And I'm like, this is everything. It was so good. It, it was, was so, so good. good. And, like, the endings were so, like, ridiculous on both of them. Because, like, the first season, season. She, the first season, she chose the wrong person, and everybody yeah. knew it. And then the second season, she chose who seemed like the right person, and then, like, totally. at the very end, on the show, like, had a crisis of faith, and, like, it was insane. I'll, I'll never forget the end of season two, because they had the one girl that she did choose, Yes, and then the girl was like, I don't think I'm bisexual. I think I might just be straight. Yes, like it was like on so the like, way to the ceremony. Yes, and but I feel like that <laughs> was like so ahead of its time too, though. Like because we all have like I think like sexuality can be very fluid, and like yeah. people don't always realize. And there was no other like representation of that moment of no. someone being like, I don't know. Yeah, what is what I actually feel. It was really, what a, what a time. Yeah. And then I just like, remember her being like, go get Bo. Cause like she just sent Bo oh away and said like, I yes. didn't choose you. Oh She's like, God. turn around, get her. And I, I just totally like, forgot about that. And like, I'm <laughs> maybe that was like what broke Tila down and made her go down that That's what it was. was like being like, I'm in love. And the person being like, yeah, no, no. And being like, shit. <laughs> um, and then they tried Crazy. bringing the twins in, and the problem I think was having twins. I think if it yeah. was, if I think if it was just one of them, it would have been fine. But having two, like bachelorette people in it, I think was the weird part. Um, but it was really nice that we had a show that had actual, you know, bisexual visibility in it. Because totally, um, I still think we have a lot of challenges with bisexual visibility and erasure, where you know. You have people who think bisexuality means that, you know, sexuality is a choice. Totally. Um, you have people who, you know, still make the joke about how bisexuality is just a pit stop to being gay. Yeah, yeah. Or that bisexual people and pan people have to make up their mind. And that's like a huge problem that I think a lot of people who aren't, you know, exclusively straight or exclusive, exclusively homosexual have to challenge every single day is, you know that their sexuality is valid and then we had this show that didn't just say it was valid but made its entire premise about that totally. which totally was great and was it trash tv yeah it's reality tv yeah all of it is though <laughs> so thank you um, if it wasn't i wouldn't have enjoyed it 
did they set up stuff for it to like go haywire? Yeah, of course they did. You know damn right during that show that they had somebody going in Tila's ear being like, choose this one and this one because they're going to fight. Of course. <laughs> of course. Of course. Because it's a part of the game. It's a game within a game. That's why I love reality TV. Yeah. Because not only are you competing in like some sort of weird game you're also figuring out what the producers want what these people want yeah. i think all of that other stuff is so interesting yeah. the other thing i liked about tequila tequila was nobody got a villain or hero edit i felt like yeah, it was no one was either nobody was yeah. either like everybody was like pretty face value and the only time somebody i think got like a harder villain edit was the two people who like slept with each other on the first night and Tila's like, right. get the fuck out of my house. Oh my and God, I was like, yes. yeah, you can't fake that. They they had sex. Everybody knew it in this like giant group bed. And like Tila found out was like, get the fuck out of my house. And like, that wasn't a villain edit that you did an action on TV and you got caught. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And like the weird thing is like, why would she care? Like it's the first night they don't even know you or anything. But at the same time, I guess it's like this weird thing of like, what is the premise of the show if we're all just like sleeping together and stuff when you're supposed to be here for me <laughs> here for me right and like i don't blame her for being like hey you came no. on there's like chance to meet me you met each other mm -hmm. fucking leave you're wasting my exactly. time <laughs> because if you were so excited to meet me why did you make that choice yeah um so obviously your favorite survivor yes okay yes is there other is there international versions of Survivor or just like Yes, there are. Okay. There are. There's Australian Survivor, there's New Zealand Survivor, I believe. Yeah. There's a, a bunch of different ones. And a lot of people like them, but for me, um, it is they're so long. The other ones are so long. They're more like Big Brother seasons where each episode is like like it's aired three times a week. Like okay. and I'm like, that is so much. But I do love the immerse the immersion of that. But then I'm like but I need to watch all my other reality shows too. <laughs> so, what about the circle or something, you know? So between Survivor and every single mm -hmm. country that we've got about like 200 ish people surviving in the middle of nowhere, starving to death for entertainment yes. at a time. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. It's, it just feels right. You know, <laughs> they're suffering. They suffer. joy. Yeah. <laughs> they should suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, do you watch any international reality TV at all? I watched, oh my God, oh my God. What was, there was this Korean one that I used to watch and it literally just oh. went my head. Oh my God, I'm so annoyed with myself. I loved it. Um, it's like, they were just really smart. They were all really smart people. Not like the genius. It's something, oh, I can't think of it. It was such a good one. One of my favorites. Um, I've watched Big Brother Canada. Um, but what was that? That Korean one was so freaking good. Um, to Google, to the Google. Um, it was a competition one too. Okay. Um, so it's like a trivia thing. No, it was like really, really cool. It was like um. Very much like strategy based. There was teams. It was like eliminations, but there was like more so like eliminations, kind of like the challenge where you had like a second chance to like survive. Like you're in the bottom, but you're not going to go home immediately. Unlike Survivor, where you just go home, except for the twist seasons of Survivor. But that's so convoluted to be like, what are the rules of Survivor? I'm like, depends on what season you're on. Yeah. Um, but that's like all of them. Yeah. But that um, one was just it was just so big brain. There were such good characters. Um, there, the first season, there was this woman who I just absolutely loved, who took no shit from anyone. I was like, oh my god, yes, 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 because she knew she was fucking smart, and she was. Um, I think she made the finals. It was just like such a good show, and I can't believe I can't think of it. It'll pop into my head probably. <laughs> Have you like thirty minutes later? Yeah. Have you ever watched the show Terrace House? Yes, I have. I don't remember it very well, though. I loved it. It was cute. Like, it was just, like, that was one of those dating shows that was just genuinely cute. Because it was, like, oh, like, owning your own apartment is expensive. What you're going to do is you're going to live in this one for really yes. cheap. Um, yes. By us having, like, 
um, six or eight, like, boys or girls all living in what in Japan is considered a mansion, but here would be considered just a large house. Um, (laughs) Except there's one season, they go to Hawaii. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And it, like, the entire point of it was that, like, you went to this house, and then you just fell in love with somebody there or gained enough confidence to, like live on your own and run in your separate way. So there was no challenge. There was no big goal. Cool. It was cute. Like, it's, yeah, the, sounds cute. it's the cutest dating show ever. Cause it's just like either find love or like go on your own way. And everybody was like, of course, like healthy. everybody was like a model or like right. something aspiring like that way where it was like, Oh, this is like good press coverage for them. But like, Everybody was just, like, super cute and, like, well-adjusted, in my opinion. And, like, the drama in the house was always, like, well, are you or aren't you? Are you two going to move into the room together? (laughs) And it's, like... Do they like each other? Yeah, that's cute, though. Yeah, it was adorable. And then after season two of watching it on Netflix, I was, like, I'm tired of subtitles and I stopped watching (laughs) It's just, but it is hard because you want to – it's like you have to go back and forth. Like I am an anime fan, and yeah. but a lot of people get really mad at me, but I do love a dub. I well, love a dub. And I can do it with anime because I'm really invested in the story. But with the reality TV, yes. I'm like, I want to have mindless fun. I don't want to think about this. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You're just like, I don't care. I just want to just like vibe. Exactly. Let me, vibe. <laughs> Let yeah. me relax. Um oh, now. Yeah. 100% you're just like, I'm tired. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. So, other than that, what other kind of reality TV do you like? There's some dating shows I like. Like, I do enjoy, like, Love Island. Okay. I like, um, I like a lot of those really bad ones, too, where they're just fighting a lot. Like, I like a, I will, I like a housewife. I will watch a housewife. I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I always my favorite, because, like, I go and, like, waves with it because yeah. sometimes i'm like okay too much too much yeah. too much but then then i fall back in love with it so Fair. i'm really enjoying beverly hills this season um and yeah i just like i just like watching people navigating a situation that's real but isn't real i think it's so interesting yeah i find it like who is the most authentic and who is clearly like putting on a show. I enjoy trying to figure all of that out. And sometimes it's like the opposite of what you think it's going to be. Yeah. Um, so. The one show that was like that, that I never knew if they were being like authentic or if they were like camping it up was like Jersey Shore. Yes. Right. And that one felt more authentic than a lot of them because it was just. Yeah. Why would you make these choices? (laughs) (laughs) Um, And then, like, it's weird watching it now because, like, all the girls in that show are super well-adjusted, like, mature adults now. And then you watch the guys, and half of them are, and the other half are just still holding on to the, the like, first thing. Um, Yes. And there's actually a British version of that called Jory Shore. Oh, yes, and, Geordie Shore. And I know it because they go on the challenge afterwards. I love Geordie Shore. It's so I good. A season. It's, I think, messier. <laughs> oh, oh, I have no doubt. Based off of those, like, clips I would see, like, the highlight. Because they're like, here's our international Geordie Shore contestants this season. You meet them, you're like... Oh yeah, my like, God. what was that fight? The, the thing is, like, Jersey Shore, when they all signed up for that, they didn't know what was going to happen. They just, like, went on the show and then, like, whatever. On Jersey Shore, they saw the Jersey Shore and they're like, we're going to be like that. But yes. worse. <laughs> I'm going to be messy as fuck. Yeah. And I don't blame that. Like, brilliant. That's good TV and stuff. Yeah. But. Wait, what was it? Like, I think of things that are kind of like that, like Laguna Beach and the yeah. hills and stuff. I haven't those thought of didn't those feel, forever. Those don't feel very authentic at all. I fucking loved them. I, they like, rem- I loved the hills. They reminded me of just, like, regular TV. Like, I was like, yes. oh, there's just, like, OC pretending it's, like, real. <laughs> totally that was so interesting it was so interesting and like the weird sort of like um <laughs> uh, like 
Lauren Conrad decided not to go to Paris and all of that drama because she decided to spend the summer with her boyfriend. It was so, like, ridiculous drama that was like, <laughs> I can't believe Elsie did that. I was like, my God. It's, she didn't do that. It wasn't real. And, like, <laughs> also, she's famous. Even if it was, like, a real situation, it's not like that opportunity is not going to come back for her. She's famous. Oh, she so rich now she like has a Coles line now like she is so successful yeah she she's fine. <laughs> she's fine she's fine she's good yeah um i'm trying to think of what else like during the because i don't think we're at the peak of reality tv it 100 percent was no. like the 2000s like the yes. mid 2000s like 2010s all of the vh1 celeb yeah. reality ones were so good the flavor of loves the i love money um i love new york charm school all of that was so good i hated flavor of love that's understandable but i loved new york <laughs> right. and we wouldn't have new york without flavor of love the thing but... i never understood with flavor of love is like half these girls you're like you are in this for the money without question right. because like I couldn't, like, no offense to Flav, but I could not be with that much of her personality 24-7. I would go ballistic. Yeah, I can't even be with myself that much. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> I couldn't imagine. Yeah, I'm supposed to be the loud one in the relationship. Not, you can't win. <laughs> no, it's hard. It is hard because you, you, yeah. It's about that balance. Yeah, it it's is about that balance. <laughs> and like you'd watch these shows where you'd have these like really big personalities, having really big personalities compete after them, and you're like, this is not gonna work and it never did because there's always like two or five seasons of them where they're like i'm just trying yes. to find true love with 30 people at the right. same time for right. the third time <laughs> right i think what's also like yeah it just like there's it's always like the cycling of like it's not working out it's not working out but like what's funny to me too like if i was on one of those shows i would be the quiet one and I'm not quiet. <laughs> I'm like, a, I view myself as pretty boisterous, a little, um, I could be occasionally a little obnoxious. But like on those <laughs> shows, I'd be like, you're the boring, quiet one. I'm like, geez. <laughs> what, I, what, what, what am I supposed to do about that? Get oh, you know what? One we should be talking about, we haven't talked about yet. What? We haven't talked about Drag Race at all. No, we haven't. We haven't talked That's about crazy. Drag Race at all. But imagine the gays are not talking about Drag Race. Right? They're, everyone's like, okay, so we're talking about reality TV. How long have we been into this? They haven't even brought up Drag Race, which is also one of my favorites. See, but they... I only watch the All-Stars more or less now because um, I get bored of the seasons now. And I have, like, I... hot takes of these. So No, 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 please, because I recently – with that, not this All Star season. I'm actually enjoying this, this All Star awesome, season. Man. Yeah, it's very fun. Um, the last season, I, I, I watched. I started watching clips. I couldn't. I was yeah. so tired. Yeah, I was so tired. There's always Drag Race happening now, and like there's Drag Race Australia, which was, oh, oh, poopy. Yeah. Then there was Drag Race Canada, which was perfection. Yes. There was Drag Race, uh, uh, Britain's Drag Race, which is actually perfection. It I is. love Britain's Drag Race because they're so eclectic. Everybody's unique. And it reminds me of early Drag Race. Yes. Yes. Which... Because it's more, it's more real. It feels more real. And everybody's more authentic and individual. Um, I feel like with American Drag Race, because they're just, like, pumping it out over and over and over. It's kind of like a code. Yeah, it's there's, like, a formula, and you basically mm. come into the show, and it's like, okay, which one of, like, four drag queen, like, types are you? Are right, you going to exactly. be the pageanty girl? Are you going to be the artsy girl? Are you going to be the pretty passable girl? Or are you going to be the fighting girl? Right. You only have those four. Exactly. Um, and, like, that's that's it. And then, like, you can be the comedy queen, I guess, but you're still going to be one of those four. Sort of, like, exactly. Types. Exactly, though. And, like, that's all there really is now. 
um, where like when you watch the original seasons, like season one, not a single one of those girls were the same. No, you it was had like, everything. Had people walking in uh, in jeans. It was <laughs> it was a different planet. Now, uh, uh-uh, uh, that would yeah. never happen. But like, there was. I feel like we like putting these like weird rules on like what it means to do drag yeah. has brought the show down for me a little bit because yeah. it's like if you don't spend five million dollars on costumes and i'm like i don't know a queen i've ever s- surrounded myself with that had this much money no. disposable income just to buy all that fancy stuff i'm like that's just not real well it's and not real to me most of the drag queens that go on there will say like they take out loans to compete yeah on drag race because as long yeah. as they get to like that middle area they're going to at least break even but if they don't like they don't get bookings they don't know it and if they win they're gonna be rolling in it um exactly. so it really is but the thing is when you first watched it they were still being like oh i made this i made this like yes i did this and they're talking about the construction of their runway gowns and how they did it where most of them they're like my friend designed this with me um exactly. and you can really tell on all stars because when they bring the all stars back the older their season is the more you can tell that they like had to be involved in it um because the newer queens yes. you're like oh yeah like this fits the challenge it's just like this where the old ones like where like on the older ones you're like oh this outfit cute it's quirky it's something i've never seen before and then like they'll be talking they're like yeah i made this at home one day with like da, da, da. like manila yes. when manila's like yeah i made yes. this thing and yara um yara, yara. will be like oh i Alexis. made this yara would be like i made this dress three days before i got here <laughs> And, like, that's not even, like, a skill I'm good at. Like, I am not a construction kind of person. But, yeah. like, I appreciated the people that were. And I was in awe of that because, like, when I watch a show, I want to watch skills that I don't necessarily possess. You know what I mean? Yeah. And there's because... less design challenges now if you watch there's a lot less. I know. Season three was ridiculous, though, with the design challenges, yeah. like eight million of them. Yeah. And the but old it was just... such a fun challenge. And in the old one, they always had design challenges. Like every second episode was a like, construct mm-hmm. this gown out of construction paper. Right. And exactly. it was just like, all right, we're like, now it's like, okay, we're going to have the construction challenge or like the, yes. like, there's one where before it was like, you've got eight. We're yeah, on a budget. Eight. We can't. We cannot be paying these people to be singing these lip syncs for us right now. We need you all to just make something. Mm. But it was cool. It was nice. It just felt. I don't know. I think what it is is just like the price tag to be a viable participant on mm. Drag Race. I think ruins the show. And I mean, I know like Raja O'Hara this season is like they're she was very clear about being like i know a lot of people spend a lot of money i made sure i did not because guess what we don't have that much money and i was like but see that's what and i I love her this this season so i'm like this that's the thing is the people who don't i find you do in my opinion are more memorable and do better more charming there's just something there's just something more authentically you see who they are i don't know and like i know manila manila spent money on her all-star season don't get me wrong but not nearly as much as anybody else did because she either made it or worked mm-hmm. with the person who made it for all of her right. looks. And every single look that she had was iconic because they were just mm-hmm. so uniquely her. And I exactly. miss that about the older seasons is that you had more of that. I like it aesthetic. Yeah. I like that. I don't like that anyone feels like they have to switch something to be... Yeah. I don't know, fit in with a competition sort of thing. Because, like, my favorite queens are, like, Coco Peru. Yeah. And, like... Wears the same wig every time. Uh, I don't want Coco Peru to wear... Yeah. Different not color that, hair because... Not that, like, amber... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, like, if you think about it now. Like, if Alaska showed up in a season now for the first time, she would have been laughed out of the room showing up in that garbage yeah. bag dress. And exactly. when she came on, though, in the older seasons, everybody was like, this is iconic. Like, this is yeah. amazing. She made that out of trash in her room on the way here. It is beautiful. It is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And again, if she would have showed up now, people would have been like, really? Mm. 
Mm. And like, I don't get it. Oh, she's the artsy one, and that's yeah. like, or crafty queen. Like being yeah. called crafty is like an insult. Yeah, I'm like, can't relate. Um, and can't then relate. like you go to BBC now, where they are not winning prize money. They are not winning any prize money on BBC, and they got that craftiness back. Everybody it was so unique. Up. It's and like Bimini's like whatever the heck she was the like what was she she was like a virus or like a single cell yes and it was beautiful and amazing and so much and you know knowing what i know about like bimini and them like she had her hand in that she did that like there's so much talent there and it's great to see that and i think my problem with like the australian one uh, opposed to like the british one and the canadian one is the Australian one's already lining up to be what um, American mm-hmm. Drag Race is now, yeah. where Canada and BBC are still like, nope, we don't get paid enough to <laughs> be those queens. We're still handcrafting our stuff, and it's great. And I, a lot of people did not like the judging in Canada, but I don't think there's right. anything more Canadian than having a, <laughs> a, a democratic system for who's getting eliminated. Uh, you know what? That's very fair. That's very fair. I didn't think about it that way at all. At all. <laughs> like, adorable. I, like, I love that Canada's drag race is a democracy. Like, nobody chooses. It's, okay, all of us are going to put our votes in. <laughs> Yeah, I did find that always bizarre that they're like, okay, the votes are it. I'm like, okay. Here we yeah, go. and I, I want to know who voted what a lot of the times. That being yeah. said, and I will say this, y'all showed your racism with Canada's Drag Race mm. because were Canadians Drag Race's judges harsh? Yes. I think yeah. they were because they think not having RuPaul there made them feel like they had to be a little bit more cutthroat. Yeah. Um. But really, they did have one of everything. Um, they had Jeremy, who was like, who's been an actor, who's yeah got that aspect. Yeah. yeah. Um, you had uh, Brooklyn, who has been in like international pageants. She's done the competition. She knows that stuff. Um, yeah, she and, won Miss Continental. She's like legit, yeah. legit. And then you had the model who showed you how to runway. She could talk fashion. They really did get all three aspects of like what it took to be that person um so you had each of those judges looking at an individual thing where nowadays you don't like with the american one you don't have that um no you have rupaul who's rupaul um you have michelle visage who in my opinion is the best judge on that show she has the best critiques she knows what she's talking about um I think she almost has a better idea of the drag experience than 98% of drag queens out there right now. Um, cool. And, like, you got to remember, Michelle Visage grew up in the New York ball scene. Yeah, she absolutely. Knows. She knows. She's lived it. Category is face. Category is face. Like, that's where her name comes from. <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. She knows what she's talking about. Um, and then you have, like, Ross Matthews, who's – I don't know why he's there. Well, I was really excited for a long time. I like. I think what's great about Ross Matthews is I just like him. I, I find him so likable. I understand. I, I get don't. it. Like, I just find that he's very opinionated about stuff. He doesn't understand. Mm-hmm. And he says the one thing, which I think is the biggest insult you could make. Um, And he says it so nicely. And I think it's the most cutting thing, which is he goes, you don't seem to have personality. And I'm like, that's not okay. And like, but that's the thing is that's always his go to is you don't have personality or you don't have enough personality. And I'm like, you know how insulting it is to go up to somebody's face and be like, you don't have a personality. You're dead on the inside. Yeah. Right. And I guess, like, I know that he's trying to say, like, we're not seeing it or whatever. But he's don't straight... know who you are. Yeah. Right. But just because he doesn't get the call, like, he doesn't know who they are, doesn't mean he has the right to tell people they don't have a personality. No, you're and, totally like, right. who are you, Ross Matthews? Like, I don't know who you are other than a living gay stereotype. 
No, I think that's totally, I think that's totally valid. I think where I was like with the Michelle critiques, I think Michelle, the one thing I get really upset with with the Michelle critiques is just anytime it was um, specificity of a queen being not um, honored. I think that always bothered me a lot because they're like, I know it's, it's like a pageant kind of thing. We need to see other sorts of looks from you. And I just would get really frustrated because like for me, there's some people who take drag as a character, it's specific mm. character as opposed to yeah. um, always changing looks or anything like that. Yeah. And I've always responded well to that. So I was always frustrated with like milk critiques in season six or um uh max's critiques in season seven i was just so annoyed they're like yeah. change your hair i'm like well that's not who that person is yeah. though the thing and is so that was my one thing i always get frustrated with be, only do, the only thing doing drag as long as i have which mm -hmm. has been like a minute <laughs> <laughs> I get what she's saying. Yeah, I can um, understand it. Because after doing it a while, like, I get the whole, like, you have, you have to challenge yourself. You do have to do things that you don't think you'd ever do. Um, and by doing so, you do evolve. And the thing is, you find that way to, like, branch out into something different, but still be authentically you. And you find yourself. Like you find yeah. who you authentically are by breaking that mold and being like, oh, I should do this. Um, opposed to just like staying in your comfort zone. And I get that. Right. But as a new queen, when like the show first came out and her coming in, I was like, fuck you, Michelle. Like, go fuck right. yourself. And now that I've like been doing it for a while, I'm like, no, I get what she's saying. Like, I Because I like maybe that's do. where my defensiveness comes in because there is specific things that I would be like, I don't want to change that. I no. like that for a reason. Yeah. But then I'm like, well, but maybe it is. Maybe yeah. it's me refusing to leave a comfort zone. And that's the thing. Is like Mich when Michelle does it, it's one of those things where she's not challenging people to change it forever. She said, right. try it once. Once. See what you think. Right. Like when a drag queen came up to me the one time was like, you need to learn to blend. And I was like, fuck no, not blending. It's my authentic, like it's my style. Yeah, and then I started exactly. blending and I'm like, oh. You're like, <laughs> I'm like this style. Right, right, exactly. I get uh, you. <laughs> um, so like I definitely get it. And like I think Mich like if anything ever happened to RuPaul fracking Charles, um, <laughs> I would want Michelle to take over the show. Right. I wouldn't know who else could. Like, when somebody's like, oh, we could have this drag queen or this room. I'm like, no, have Michelle. Michelle knows what she's talking about more than almost anybody. And Michelle is the person who goes on tour with all of them. She knows those queens yeah. better than anybody. And yeah. you can tell if you ever watch the behind the scenes stuff when, like, Untalked, which if you're not watching Untalked, you're really missing, like, the meat. Yeah. Um, like getting half the story. Like you're, in my opinion, you get more out of watching Untucked than you do out of watching the show. You really get to see them talk. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Wait, Shangela fell off a boat in Puerto Vallarta. <laughs> <laughs> you mean fell out of a box in Puerto? I think we might be confused. I did not know about that. Um. <laughs> That's so funny. I had no idea that happened. Thank you. Thank you, Cassie. Uh... Um. <laughs> I've met Shangela. I've partied with Shangela. Shangela is super fucking funny. I love Shangela to hang out with. Um. We definitely. Oh, cool. Never mind. I'm not going to give that. I have a few stories about a few RuPaul's Drag Race queens. I and like working with them um the ones you think are going to be the best aren't the, necessarily no. and the opposite is true yeah like when, of the, the worst are the best we met shangela after her like second like her first comeback um mm -hmm. and she can party like no other we have a picture of her pass out in a bathtub it's great um morgan mcmichaels is so fun. Oh, cool. Um, I may or may not have stolen a bottle of champagne from a bar with her. May, no, can't confirm. <laughs> nor deny. Um, can't confirm or deny. To be fair, they offered it to her. She just didn't drink it at the bar. 
we drank it after. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Um, who else has been? Um, I met I met Sharon Needles. She was there. She was there. She was there. That's really all I have to say about her. Um, yeah. Jinx was great. Uh, Willem, awesome person. Um, very professional. Was the, I that's my like so lovely, so, so nice. professional. Um, when she came, she had just finished a gig, got on the plane, slept on the plane, showed up got ready was that the thing and like some people were like oh she seemed like really like kind of separate and da, 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 da. she was tired she was like working and she mm -hmm. brought she brought a friend of hers to come with her to perform with her who's a rail leader um who she just brought in for free for like a pride event with very little money right like right well it was great um who else have we had I'm trying to think of like other people I worked with or met and stuff like that, but like drag race queens are people, and I think people need to remember that. Sometimes. Yes, they're just such humans. Like I, there's like I can speak so highly of both Willem because like so lovely to me on set, and Jasmine Masters is just like one of the nicest queens I've ever met. Just yeah. so supportive, so loving. We just there to talk to everyone does not have an ego at all just yeah. so lovely and like and there's other queens that weren't as lovely jasmine masters i can guarantee if i met i probably wouldn't like get along with like we would not be friends but i wouldn't hate oh, them so. we'd be acquaintances but it's just because me and jasmine masters i don't think have those kind of personalities where it's like i can respect you i think you're a great person we right. probably won't get along just was but it was just so warm and nice mm -hmm. and was getting ready with all the girls and yeah. i loved that i love that because um, like they a lot of times they have their own separate space yeah uh coco Montrees, fantastic super down to earth i love that it's um, like it's poopy and, edits sometimes and her drag her drag kids are all fantastic like i know her yes. one drag kid darius uh works in vegas with her um is he a thirst trap fucking guess he is uh, that okay. guy has no I, like no problems showing off what he's got in the body he has but like if you ever talk to him Works. so down to earth super mellow See, that's lovely um, and that's how that whole family I found was is this they seem very like scary when you meet them and like very polished and very like right. whatever and then you meet them and you're like oh you're the nicest person ever <laughs> right totally though I think it's just so we're so used to um, I don't know. We just got, we have this like bias of like this is what I already think of someone I didn't actually ever meet. Well, we almost and we put them on these pedestals where they they're, they're yes. so much more, and they're so much. And they don't get me wrong. They hustle. Did they work hard? They're these yeah. great people. They're humans. They are. They're people. Um, through and through. And don't for like don't forget that Chad. Oh Chad, Chad's fantastic. Yeah, I I, I thank goodness because I would just assume. Yeah, Chad is very, like, down-to-earth and real. Um, we had an issue when we were taking pictures with Chad uh, where the camera wouldn't go off, and they are the one who actually put that, like, you probably have it on video, and we're like, fuck! And just, like, laughed it off. <laughs> um, I love that, though. Yeah, I've heard of this Shangela twice. Who else have we hung out with? I'm trying to think. Oh, Yara Sophia. Um, which is great because she's on the season this year. You know how her yeah. big thing has been, like, she's so, like, out there and crazy mm -hmm. she's like that yeah good she, she, yeah that that's that's her the first time i met her she was drunk and she <laughs> the bar we were at had their like menu displayed on a window outside uh -huh. and uh -huh. she saw it and was like what is this she's like this is a white people menu and like took it out of the thing and like wrote on it and like put it back she's like better it's got more spice now like ran in the bar so funny and it's a paper menu it gets to phase all the time I'm sure totally, used to it. of course um but it was the funniest thing ever and when she performed like i have never seen a drag queen do a 15 minute like non-stop dance set where i wasn't bored until i saw her perform i was like holy Whoa, shit work. <laughs> work. Yeah. i love that like yara is a gift 
I love that. Don't take that back. And like when she was in the season, I was screaming. And it's weird because they almost try giving her a bit of that like villain edit of being like yeah, cocky a little bit. and all that stuff. She just doesn't give any fucks. And like she just lives her life authentically and for fun. And like she's not worried about people pleasing or and like she said, she doesn't beg. She's not that person. She's just herself. And that's exactly it. Like meeting her, that is who she is. Um, right. So if anybody comes for Yara, I will fight you. Watch out. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> um, and like that photo that Caspi drew up me. Not that kind of No, sorry. <laughs> so gross. <laughs> I love it, though. I love the callback. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the show that people aren't talking about, uh, speaking of Drag Race, though, is Legendary. I haven't watched it yet. You should. I know. Um, Legendary is about New York ball culture. Which, yeah, I, I know. I Something I would love to know more about. I just have HBO. I don't know. Is what almost every dragism comes from. And, like, they're going to tell you on Legendary to stop calling it a death drop because it's a dip. Right. <laughs> um, death, right. death drops are a thing. They're completely different, though. They're completely different. Uh, what death, are they? So a death drop is when your feet come completely off the ground. A uh, dip gotcha. is when you leave your feet on. So um, when um, Aja jumped off that thing, you know, is she going to jump from there? No. That's a death drop. Right, because both feet had to come up. Like it's when nothing touches the ground. Um, a drop, like a, di a, or a dip is like when you like go from one and you go down and your shoulders can never touch the ground. Oh, gotcha. Like, that's a huge thing that a lot of people don't understand, I think, too, is, like, with dips, your shoulders can't touch the ground. If they do, you're cut. Um or you know. And, like, I... We actually did... Um, what's her name? Stacy Lane Matthews came to a underground ball we had in a warehouse. Oh, my God, how fun. Um, That we were in, and it was amazing like if you ever have a chance to go to an authentic ball in a grungy ass warehouse go do it do, do it. it but remember you're a visitor if you are a oh, yeah. if you are a if you are a and like i'm going to pour this out there and this might hurt some people's feelings if you are a small twinky young white gay coming into a ball culture and you do not know anything this is not Just your observe. space observe enjoy but don't make it about you um yes and remember that before you start putting your yes queens out there and everything that language comes from the ball culture right when you say that language there they are the where it came from if right. you are saying stuff wrong because you heard it on drag race or popular media yes they will call you out do not get defensive Take the notes. Yeah, just get the education. <laughs> Thank you. It's like a present. Thank you for the present. Yeah. I get to learn. Um, Because, like, if I have to hear one more person who knows nothing about the gay culture be like, oh, my sister is serving executive girl realness, realness yes. on her way to work. And I'm like, you do realize where realness comes from. Like, realness was a category in the ball culture where it was, you know, trans and drag queens yes pat like w the category was about like if you were on the street would you pass as a cis female doing yeah. whatever that was so like when they say you know executive woman realness they're saying would you pass as a cis woman if you're walking down yep. the street around the normies uh, it, um and that's where it comes from so when you're saying that about a cis woman you sound stupid <laughs> totally though. Oh my of course, of course they are. Yeah. Um, um huh? so if you say that in a ball, they're gonna look at you and be like No. <laughs> yeah. Um and remember that shit. <laughs> oh. Take that, the note and move on. Yeah. yeah. On that note, for some reason this just reminded me of it. Tatiana is fantastic in person. <laughs> oh, that makes me so happy. Love Tati. Um But yeah, like Legendary's great and like Legendary, the fashion's fantastic. And you have to remember in the ball culture, like, those people have no money. They're not trying to impress you. They're yes. trying to impress themselves. And that's why they make these amazing outfits. Like, ugh. 
amazing. Yeah, and I need to get on it. I need to. I will have. I should see if I can do a viewing party, and then we can just like chill and watch. Ooh, it be fun. cute. That would be cute. We can do it on your channel or something. We can just be like, we're gonna watch Legendary and get Ian caught up and like do commentary. Oh, I'm down whenever. <laughs> Love that. We're gonna do commentary. Commentary. <laughs> Hi, I'm gonna talk about things I know nothing about. Get ready. Get into it. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, Legendary is great. Um. Do you remember when there was that wave of like reality TV show cartoons? <gasps> oh, I <laughs> wanted to do a podcast queen on Total Drama Island and pretend <laughs> and, uh, like it was a real reality show. Like not like not pretend like it's a cartoon that's scripted. No, it's a real reality show. What is going through Heather's brain throughout this <laughs> entire season? Courtney was robbed. Um, <laughs> um, I wanted that. And you, there was the other one, which was which uh, Drawn Together. Oh my God, yes. I watched so much with Toot. <laughs> and. Which was a mocking of Big Brother. <laughs> yes, but I loved that one because I, I still sing. Um, what is this thing in my, my mouth? mouth. It's, it's so good. And it's slimy. It's slimy. <laughs> I think about it, it randomly in my mind. Um, I sing the Labia song a lot. <laughs> uh, uh, um, with, the with the giant yeah. Kraken living. <laughs> in her, so her octopus swa. <laughs> yeah. That... Um, and the thing exactly. is, that one used to go into politically incorrect humor. Yes, absolutely. In the most intelligent way. Yeah. Because they would go to those places and then point out how wrong it was. Totally. Um, totally. Which was very weird to have a show that was that self aware. Where they're like, we're about to say, make a racist joke, and then beat the person up who made the racist joke. Yes, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and it was just so queer, too. It felt so queer-coded oh. the entire time, and so that was um Like, nice. I still always refer to gay parties as gay bashes because of oh Drawn God. Together. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. I don't remember that. Oh my when God, Xander yes. comes out, they're like, you know what time it's for? Gay bash! <laughs> and oh then it like shows like God. this big party with like all the like Gazer and they have like Pac-Man being like, that ain't the only fruit he ate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Xander icon. <laughs> um, But like, yeah, at least it was like aware of its problematic thing and it yeah. is still problematic. Don't get me wrong. I'm not giving you oh, a yeah. pass. Um, but it's probably more aware than most things are today, and it definitely would not air today. <laughs> no. 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 I'd still... No. Yeah, but I still love it, and I still have the entire box set, and I still watch it on the regular. <laughs> Just, like, it was... It was smart. It was... And it was... It's nice, because, like, someone who loves reality TV, I always love a reality TV style kind of show. Yeah. I do. I do. Like the they have an episode where they call out the fact that the education system is racially biased. And it's not wrong, but it's not, not okay. Wrong. It's like that Whitney Houston song, it's not right, but it's okay. <laughs> 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 I've actually but, just started watching Total Drama Island too. Oh, I'm so excited for you! It, it, it's so it, it's a fun show. A lot of people like the musical numbers that eventually will start happening, but I know. But that wasn't for me. There's gonna be musical You'll see. numbers. You'll see. You'll see. You'll uh, see. I ain't spoiling. It's fun. You'll <laughs> like it though. It's a really good time. It's uh, it's smart. It's a smart show that's like really understands its audience of reality show fans and i always loved anything that would parody that like i remember when cartoon network would do like random vignettes of like their favorite cartoons all competing on survivor like a survivor-esque thing i always loved that it just made me so excited and so happy because i'm like this is what i love this is what i love and like no one else that. loves this we never got that because i'm canadian oh um, which it's, it's probably why we made Total Drama Island is because we never got that. So they're like, we're just going to make our own. That's cartoon. great. 
Um, yeah, I forgot it was a Canadian based show. Yeah. A lot um, of them are actually. Yeah, and so is um, like Sixteen was the same company. That yes, time. yes, I like that show too. Yeah, it was really good. <laughs> um, is there any other animated reality TV shows? I think those are the major ones. Re animated ones? Um, no. But it's funny because like when you think about it, like The Office and like um, uh, uh, uh Parks and Rec, very reality show style of show like they're pretending like it's a documentary kind of thing they have confessionals yeah you know it's very reality show heavy and i don't know if that has to do with the fact that it was like people who love that show grew up in like the golden era of reality tv with like the real world and survivor and all that sort of stuff i don't know but i've just noticed there's a lot of the most popular comedies take a lot from reality tv yeah. tropes i will say something which may actually make you disconnect from this call uh -oh. i don't like the office that's oh that's fine <laughs> <laughs> i just find it's a little bit too much straight people humor <laughs> no i totally get it i totally get it my mom can't she cannot watch it all she hates it i just like it because i don't know why i liked it i just did very odd Oh, BK's like me. We have so many of the same opinions. <laughs> uh oh, I love BK. Yeah. Um. So that does mean that we're getting to. I hate the office. <laughs> we are getting to one of the staples of the show. Yes. We're gonna go into our tier list. Here we go. Oh yeah, Friends is awful. Thank you, Nathan. Oh, I hate. Uh... <laughs> oh, I hate friends. Um. So we're gonna go some reality TV shows. Mm -hmm. You're gonna give us your hot takes, and then you're gonna rate it from a scale of A to F. So I got two because I didn't know which one you would prefer to do. Um, I think I do now. They're both fairly similar though. Mm hmm. Um. One is strictly competitions. Okay. Um, and one is just, like, oh. the, like, who's who of reality right now. I do, like, I think I know mo mo almost all of them anyway, so I'm comfortable doing either. But let's just do, we'll do one, and then we'll just get the experts on the other one and do it that way. Then. Okay. okay, beautiful. Um, but we're gonna probably do this one, because I think this one's the, like, more up-to-date one. Like, it's got more of, like, the what's going on now. So first of all, Big Brother. It's so hard because, like, I loved Big Brother. And, like, I fell off of it for a while. And I think that happens a lot when you go to college and stuff. You don't really have time to yeah. go be watching Just like your high school brother. boyfriend. Exactly. <laughs> Bye. Oh, my God. That's too real. Oh, my God. That's too real. <laughs> like, I gotta go. No, like, <laughs> like, you loved it. And then you, like, walk away from it. You forget about it. But then, like, you remember them again. And then you message them. And you're like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. I should call him. No, no, I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Anyway. No, but Big Brother was so freaking good. Like, I loved season four. I love season six. I love season seven. Um, but then, if you watch the most recent ones. Oh my god. You can't get past three episodes without being like, this is garbage. And there's three episodes a week. How the hell? So the last season, the last couple of seasons have just been steeped in like casual racism and sexism and homophobia. And it's always the people of color who are eliminated first. And um, then then it's the women are targeted or the homosexuals are it's just so obvious every effing time i don't know how this season's gonna go i hope this season's fun but it's like hard do i rate it based off of how it is currently or do i base it off of what it has impacted reality tv right rate it off of how it makes your heart feel right now oh right now big brother is a c for me because because it was an A, right now it's an F, but I have hope that one day it could be an A again. All right, so it's C Maybe for- Maybe if I'm on it. C for cumin rag. Oh, God. Damn that cumin rag. <laughs> um, Vander Vanderpump? Vanderpump rules. 
Vanderpump Rules um, is fun. It's so trashy. It's like the trashiest of trashy. It's like a spinoff when you know, like, a, like it's 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 a spinoff of Beverly Hills Housewives because like Brandy Glanville, like significant other cheated on her with one of the bartend or the waitresses there. It's just like legit. Like it was born out of trash. You know what I mean? Yeah. It was born out of trash. For me, it's like the Real Housewives in the Jersey Shore had a baby. It is though. It's just like, <laughs> it's a bunch of unlikable people being unlikable, <laughs> but thinking they are likable. Right. They're like good looking. That's the most <laughs> likable thing about them is that they're attractive. Um, Ish. I will give this one a yeah right a. Uh, I, in my heart, I'm giving it. I'm giving it a D. This one's a D. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna give it an F because it is. I do enjoy watching it still. <laughs> D for D par Dickens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm pretty sure this is the Real Housewives. Oh no! General? This is no. This is Keeping Up with the Kardashians. Ooh, uh, cultural impact high. But honestly, I think. It's boring as shit. I'm it sorry. It is, and very, pro- and very produced. And, like, so is Vanderpump Rules, but it's produced in a fun way. Like, having family being produced is odd. Um, but there's so many great co- quotes, like, can you stop taking pictures? Your sister's going to da- jail. Like, amazing. Like, shut up. You're being rude. <laughs> like, there's so many great moments. One time when Courtney pushed Kim into the wall, and there's a... F- you could see the... F- face imprint it's like <laughs> kind of funny not a <laughs> don't violence ever but it was kind of funny um <laughs> i will give the kardashians an f because i don't watch them i don't they don't i'm not gonna try to watch them you know what i mean like i mean i would if it was on but no no yeah that no that's that's fair um it's no osborns the osborns was hilarious no. oh my god so good so good i loved all of that like punk uh, wait, what was it? No, Jackass era yeah. reality TVs. Well, oh, and the Osborns so was the original tragic. family that you watched. It was. And it was. They were so authentically them. Like, yes. they got into fights. Ozzy normally didn't know what the hell was going on. Sharon was trying to keep the family together. Um, Kelly and – was it Dan? Yeah. Danny? Jack. Jack Osborne were usually like – calling each other out on their shit they yeah, had they another fighting and they had another sibling that nobody knew about who just didn't want to be on the show and they're like cool fine yeah and i love that yeah they didn't like there was no there was no issue and i didn't even care. like i didn't notice yeah um and the thing is their show didn't even have that much drama because they were just like authentically just a really rich british family that were kind of messy in the most beautiful Very of ways um, yeah it really was such a fun show throwing ham yeah, into the yard of the next door neighbors. <laughs> what did they do? Their their neighbors did something, so they started throwing ham at them, and it was like it was so random. Like the thing I liked about the Osbournes is like they were a hundred percent like people you knew, just with a mm-hmm. lot of money. <laughs> yeah. No, they were basically like your friend who just hit a big. Yeah, like, if you had a best friend who's like, you know how everybody had that best friend in school where you're like, I wish I had your family. They're just so cool. Yes. They were that yes. family, but with extra money. <laughs> yes. Probably a little bit messier than what you wanted, but really, it was just, uh, <laughs> you couldn't turn your eyes away. It was yeah. so fun. I wish, and then, like, see, in that reality also had, like, we had Nick and Jessica, two celebrities who were at the peak oh. of their careers, but had nowhere further to go. Um, just I living their so life. Good. I loved the newlyweds. Are you kidding? I loved Jessica Simpson so much. The, I thought she was so cute. Nothing but a t-shirt on. Um, and the video is just her referencing the entire reality show. I was obsessed. Um, and then they also had the like some of the most iconic lines of the time too. Like, is chicken of the sea tuna or <laughs> chicken or fish? Right, and just like so, <laughs> so honest. Are buffalo? What are buffalo? Are buffalo wings made out of buffalo? Like I am obsessed. Like, and the thing is, like every, genuine, genuine questions. Everybody made fun of her, but you know, damn right, 
you have asked that or one of your friends have asked that every single yes. time. Like, if somebody gave me chicken of the sea, I would ask that because I'm allergic to fish. I want to know that. Um, right. You're like, is, it, wait, is this chicken <laughs> fish? I can't eat this. It's just, um, it was so funny. And, I like, like when I was a kid, I thought buffalo wings were made out of buffalo. I didn't know they were chicken and buffalo was the sauce. <laughs> wait, though. No. What did you know? You went to old Jessica. <laughs> Um, but like they were good shows, <laughs> and they didn't feel produced. They were just people. No, it didn't really at all. Because I think they would have done different to make Nick look a little bit better. Nick just kind of seemed like that husband that was annoyed all the time. And I was like, yeah. well, you're lucky. You're lucky that Jessica makes you money. Because exactly, ninety eight degrees shortly after that show premiered went, and that solo career went nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's the circle. Oh, a, a, um, a, a. I haven't watched. Okay, so confession, I haven't watched. I just got Netflix again. I didn't have it for a while, so I haven't watched the most recent season of the circle. But the first season of the circle was so exciting, so fun. I almost did a podcast. Oh my god, this is maybe a little messy, but it's true. I almost did a podcast on it with like my um significant other at the time, um, but. Um, it was, it just didn't work out because the, my joy from the show was the opposite of what he was getting. He, it would, it was like triggering to him that they were like all communicating via social media and stuff. And so he hated it. And I was like, oh, let's not podcast on this. Cause I have joy for this. I don't want to hate this. And then <laughs> fights ensued. Fights <laughs> ensued. I was like, why are we fighting over a podcast? <laughs> um, and I mean, it really does. Like, I love more so when people catfish each other. It's my favorite. Oh, and it's just like so fun. And it's in the rules, you're allowed to do that. Like, really great. And like, felt like, like during the pandemic too, you're like, this is like what we have to live for real, for real. Oh, it was like almost too real. It was too real. And it happened before Yeah. the pandemic. And I was like, I'm living the circle. But now I feel like I could do the circle because yeah. I'm like, I've lived that life. Yeah. Um, speaking of things that happened during the pandemic, did you watch BBC Canada or not BBC, Big Brother Canada when the pandemic hit? No, oh, I heard about it, but I wasn't watching it. So, no, no, no. For Big Brother Canada, they were in the house when it happened and they were like kind of like keeping their watch on. And then when like it got to that point where they were like okay everybody needs to go home and self-isolate yeah. like watching the big brother contestants find out about the pandemic when they didn't see the like slow evolve to where it was it just like became their reality was intense yes and like there is nothing that i think surmises like how the pandemic hit people more than that moment when they're like a pandemic's hit the world we don't know a lot about it it's killing people. Your families are safe, but you have to go home. Yeah, they they didn't get to finish the season. Nope. Could you imagine though? Like one of your dreams is to be on the show, and then like this freak of like you have no idea this is going to happen. Yeah, it would be such a mind fuck. Yeah, and like I'd, they they I'd were cut off. Though, probably. They're they're cut off from the world, so they had no idea. Like there was no like with everywhere else where like we're slowly seeing like the numbers go up or seeing that like it was just i don't know they're like by the way it's taking over the whole world <laughs> right right and i think like i think it, it was big brother over the top like on at the time it was cbs all access now paramount plus um that they i think they discovered that either donald trump won or was like the yep. nominee and you yeah. could see them like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it's the cool thing. About I wouldn't believe it. I'm like Julie Chen is lying to me right in front of my salad. <laughs> well, Julie Chen Moon guys is lying. And the thing is, like, I think you realize how much we like socially condition ourselves to be okay with situations. Yeah, from those reactions on Big Brother when people who don't have like the slow build up just get it and they're like the fuck. <laughs> no, but it was so it was so fun to watch that general reaction. Like as someone who like also acts and stuff, it was like wow, that was just so visceral in that moment. How fun to see that like. 
<laughs> There's no subtlety that you can have there because you uh, that is just so in your body. You feel it. You're like, um, see, uh -huh. they should have watched so South fun. Park. South Park called it. Oh my god, always uh, or Simpsons. They always do. Yeah, they always do. Um, okay, so the next show, but if you did, but I have a question if you did the circle, would you, if you like had to do the circle or whatever, would you play yourself or would you catfish? I would play an altered version of myself. Oh, I love that. I think I'd probably end up doing that too, because but probably on accident. If you, keep, <laughs> if you keep yourself a little bit like you, it's a lot harder to screw up, but I can make myself yes. more appealing that way too. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so I would do an altered version of myself because I'm not gonna win by being myself. That entire point of that game is to just like be a little bit dirty. Um, and right. everybody's playing that same game. I'm not gonna lie about it. Um, and like I would 100% be the kind of person who's like, I'm gonna be straight, like straight up. I'm not gonna be like this is not 100% me. This is who I want to be, but I can't be. But right. that's oh a God, huge totally. conversation. Uh <laughs> That's deep. That's deep, deep. Okay. We're getting deep. Um, uh huh. X on the beach. X on the beach. Is this MTV's or is this the original like British one? Yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but... I'm gonna give it a D. I haven't watched a lot. I've seen a lot of clips though, because like I do like to keep in. Because a lot of challenge people come from it. Aubrey O'Day was on a season, and I love that fact because I am a big Danity Kane fan so that gives it some points i started watching it some fun the door well see exactly exactly and so that was fun i think it's like so trashy but i don't feel like it does anything to push any sort of like wow what has this done for real nothing this has done <laughs> it's nothing. the most generic reality TV yes. show but so well done but so generic <laughs> and that's I'm like, it's D. I like it so i'm not gonna fail it but like <laughs> meh um the bachelor oh so okay the bachelor is so boring for me like i love the limo entrances that's always fun i like meeting the contents contestants and everything but i just never really think anyone's interesting I don't really care, but I love the parody reality shows of The Bachelor. Like, um, what was it? Like, it was like, it was, it was so funny. It was like, they gave away hoses because he was a firefighter. I can't even remember what it was, but it was so freaking funny. And so I'm so grateful for it creating one of the funniest, like, stupid comedies I've ever seen. So I'll give it, I'm going to give this one a D as well because... I don't enjoy it, but I do enjoy what it has done for reality TV. No, it did. Um, I already know what you're going to do for this next one. Hey. <laughs> hey. Survivor, I know, is going to get an A because we've talked about this one a little bit in depth. I've seen every single episode, and it's been on for 40 seasons. I love the show. I love that it evolves. I love that they experiment with it. I think some twists work. Some twists suck. Some seasons are terrible. Some seasons are fantastic. But even the terrible ones, I enjoy it still. Kind. There was only one season that I was like, Ugh. oh, gripping my way through it because it was just like steeped in controversy, and I just hate that i'm like i just wanted this to be fun it's survivor we're not but just survive and play the game um but overall i think it's just so fun i think jeff probst is a great host i think he really understands the heartbeat of the show i wouldn't ever replace him um i just uh i love it so much i love the characters there's so many amazing people that came from the show that i like reality show stars in my mind and yeah it's the first big ass reality show that like changed the it, it put reality tv on the map i think mm -hmm. so i love survivor um we're gonna skip the next one because it's just big brother canada okay <laughs> it's just big brother um the next one was love island oh i love love island see this is hard i'm like do i give this an a or b because i love love island because it's just it's trashy but not but also has a lot of heart i'm thinking the uk one i'm not i, I was watching i watched a little bit of the us one i'm like no nah. but I'm, I'm only going uk um 
Season three is a gem. Season four was meh. Season five was fantastic. Which one's Love so, Island? So Love Island is um, there's five people in a villa, and they um, they like couple up with each other, and like at the end, whoever's the bit the the most popular couple wins, and then if they uh, they can choose, then it's like random at the end. This really is not a big premise of the show, but at the end whoever wins they like pick randomly and then like they either split the money or they don't and i think they've always split the money um because i think it would look really gross because like you get those people from love island become celebrities they become famous in the uk like they're huge Mm -hmm. and it's kind of the closest to us is kind of like a big brother kind of thing but even bigger like way bigger and so I, one of my favorite reality show stars, Cam- Camila, was on it and was just so normal. It was like the worst casting ever slash the best casting ever. Because like, <laughs> you're like, this girl should never be on a reality show because she like diffused bombs in Cambodia <laughs> and like was just a genius, normal person, but was like so inspiring to me. I loved her, just like watching her journey. And there's so many people that I've always, like, when I was watching it, you just, like, root for them. You root for them genuinely. So I'm going to give it an A because I think you genuinely fall in love with these people. Yeah. Um, Have you ever met anybody from a reality TV show? Yes. Oh, my God. Rachel Riley and Brendan from Big Brother slash The Amazing Race. Ah. They... Yeah, and they were so lovely. They always get, they've always gotten like not the best edits, but really were so cool in person. Yeah, everybody I've met from reality TV has actually been like the most chill, like nicest person. And I think they have to be because like their entire career is based off of being likable. Exactly. So, (laughs) like, I've not a lot, but like so nice. And Brendan, we were on set, we were doing like this web series, and Brendan just talked to me about. The Amazing Race, because I was more of an Amazing Race fan at the time than Big Brother. Mm-hmm. And it was just so nice how excited he was to talk about it. Because he's like, oh my god, everyone just wants to talk about Big Brother with me. Never The Amazing Race. Let's talk. And I was like, this was so fun. Which So he's really cool. It's a really great segue to the next one, which is The Amazing Race. I love The Amazing Race. I yeah. really, really, really loved it when I was younger. Like, I watched so much of it. Watched it with my dad. And we, like, break right before bed every day, like, like I think it was like Wednesday nights because yeah. of like you know divorced parents and you go back and forth, um, but it was such a fun one. I think it's gotten not as fun recent, yeah, in the current seasons. But I do have it as a high place in my heart. It gave us the twins, twinnies, Natalie and Nadia, who are like reality show casting. G is like what a great casting you've ever done, and they've been on Survivor and the Challenge now. Um, I would give this one a B because I feel like nowadays it doesn't have the same sort of like excitement behind it. It's too it really makes similar. Me, it really makes me sad because we have the big we have the Amazing Race Canada, but also they good though only go across Canada, <laughs> which oh. Canada is Canada's great. Canada's beautiful. Right. Every province is vastly different from each other. But, like, I want Canadians to go to India, okay? I want Canadians to go to Europe. I want them to go around the world. Totally, though. Uh, I agree. Then there was this one, which was, um, what's called Come Out? What is it called again? The proper name for it. it? What is that? Um, I know this. I know this one. I know this one. Yeah, I was looking at the image. I'm like, it kind of looks like Drag Race-ish to me. I have right. no idea what that is. Um, it's like, are you the one or something like that? Oh, are you the one? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Are you the one? But that, which is like the closest we have now to the shot of love with Tila Tequila because they had a season when it was just everyone was really queer and anyone could be matched up with anyone. Yeah. So. It was really fun. I liked that part. But I think overall the show is so trashy as well. <laughs> and I will still – I love that one season. They only had one season that was very queer. Um, but I will still give this one a D. D. Okay. Yeah. Close to an F, honestly, because I just don't think it's fun. Got you. 
um, The Bachelorette, which is really just like was a the spin off. Um, it was the spin. It was the a spin off of The Bachelor. I feel the same way about. Actually, I think I prefer The Bachelorette over The Bachelor. So, I do like, prefer. The, it's a C. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a C because I do like women. A woman choosing between a bunch of men than one man choosing a bunch of between a bunch of women. I always, I don't know why, I just prefer that. <laughs> well, it's a little less misogynistic. <laughs> it feels, it just, feels, it just feels less gross. Totally. Um, I don't know. Then there was Dance Moms. Oh. Which, Dance Moms gives me feelings. Yes, it gives you feelings. Um, they're mostly rage. Yeah. Because it, wait, no, I'm gonna let you do your thing first before I like skew the. Results. No, you're so fine. Um, I, um, think Abby Lee Miller is a great reality sh TV personality. However, I don't enjoy watching, um, kids on a reality show. I find it weird. I'm like, I don't want to watch kids subjected to this and their parents and stuff. So I don't enjoy watching it. So for me, I'm giving it an an F. Yeah, um, Dance Moms is just televised child abuse. There we go. You said it, and now he said it. I just don't. I like. I don't want to. I don't understand putting your children through this, and I don't want to watch your children go through this. Yeah, it's it's not okay to me. What perfect? They we agree do on that show because it's it's bad. Um, they're abusive to these kids. They're making these kids work harder than the parents are. Um, oh my god! They're like screaming at these children and making them compete against each other for validation. It's just... you know what? Very similar to growing up doing musical theater for me too. Because I, when I was younger, I had a dance teacher throw a shoe at me. Yeah. Because I was messing up something, and I was like, I've never in my life. And I'm like, this world is a kind of a gross world where people think this is show business we're allowed to push them we want them to grow as a person I'm like that is not conducive to growth to learning to anything i just hate it yep um it's 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 pretty gross McIntyre. yeah yep um I don't like it. Um, I love the kids because the kids are talented. Yes, of course. They're the kids so are talented. amazing. But it's not okay what they did to those kids so that the moms and Abby Lee could be famous. Right. Exactly, though. I agree. Um, The challenge. Dude, the challenge is difficult because I, I keep up with every season. The challenge in my heart was like my first one that I was like obsessed, obsessed with because I would pretend I was competing on the challenge in, the, in my backyard. I would <laughs> use my WWE action figures to... Uh, hi, Angel. I used my WWE um, action figures to uh, do the challenges and I would, I would get a piece of paper and I would write down the total points and I'm totally in control of my <laughs> WWE action figures and how well they do. Yeah. But like in my mind, I'm like, this one does this one. And then I tally up the scores. I'm like, I can't believe my, one of my favorite WWE action figures was eliminated. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not even kidding. So ridiculous. So I have such a love for it. I think the show is not as good. However, the challenge all stars came out on Paramount plus, and it is so freaking good it is exactly what it used to be it's what you want to be because a lot of them are now just random reality tv show stars where before it was real world road rules people yeah. and it was so much it was so much more fun and all of that and so for me because of that i'm putting it back to a i think i would have given it a b because of how it is now but i got so much joy out of the last the all-star season i was like oh my god it's back, it's back. <laughs> um Love is Blind. I've only watched some of it. It was just so gross to me. I, I, I didn't watch all of it. Remember There's when one couple that looked cute? <laughs> Remember when gays were running the Sanctity of Marriage and then they made this show? Yeah, um... they play, <laughs> but T, I'm like, oh, where are the where are the problems? <laughs> all um, right. But I'm also the type of person that doesn't, I believe I can fall in love with someone without ever seeing them. Um, because I fall in love with, like, the heart. I know. Yeah, but so, they also I'm only so know annoying. each other for, like, but a week. Right. 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. I need to know you for like at least. A, a, I, I need to spend a lot of time. Like I am a time kind of person to know. Um, so I'm failing that one because like I just couldn't even keep up with it. All right, sorry. Um, and then there was Rupal's. Rupal, um, citrus. Um, <laughs> I love Did vanilla you crumb. <laughs> Libations oh, with my, citrus. That's my favorite. Yes, that's my favorite. Like drag, like the most inspiring that was, that drag was queen the for me. Best um, snatch game too. Oh my god! It's just because it was just it was it was clever. It was funny. Just funny. Yeah. Just be funny. Out of nowhere, like it, Maggie Smith is not a funny character, but no. Ben made her a funny character. Exactly. Um, Could you imagine such, such a thing? thing. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <They're also> <laughs> Um, I think RuPaul's Drag Race has gone down a lot, but I think in my heart it's so good. I really enjoy it. That's like hard for me not to give it an A. If you include but, like, All Stars, definitely an A. Right, but like, and this... if you include the international seasons, definitely yes. Yeah. Except for I hated Down Under. I don't think anybody liked Down Under. No, that that's the one and done. I think. Um, <laughs> but Canada's a really good se show season and. UK is it feels the most dragged it feels like real like real what's real drag it feels the most authentic drag to me is the UK version yeah. so I will ace this one yeah I don't yeah. and again I don't think it's okay what people did to um Jeremy Barry on his season yeah um it, 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 it when it came down to it it was just a lot of gay people didn't like a black man having an opinion yeah, and it sucks. It was not okay. Um, so if you're one of those people who were mean on the Twitter, I you, see you, you and I think you're a douche. You suck. Yeah. Um, they're people. They're the judges are still people. Don't be an asshole. Like Why, RuPaul's, yeah. RuPaul's you fans are the worst. Like someone, you're allowed to dislike someone and just shut up. You don't have to say anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have an opinion, don't, but don't say anything. It's yeah. weird. Um, RuPaul's. Fan basis is the worst. I agree. Um, well, also, like, people all, and everyone thinks their opinion is, like, important. I think that's also the part that I go, like, no one's opinion is that important. Please. No. no. Um, you don't, like, that's the thing, of, again, with reality TV, you do not get the right to ever treat people the way that drag race fans feel they are entitled to it's treat so weird people. it's um, so weird it bothers me it just is it's so illogical it is so it's so lack of empathy it it breaks my heart yeah um it breaks so my heart i've already moved over the step that we've oh, already cool. rated um because this is specifically competition shows gotcha gotcha um their class is a little bit different. They I put see, it yes, ass and got rid of an F. Um, so there was American Idol. Oh, I love Kelly Clarkson. I love that first season. And then every other season starts getting a little worse and worse. I did see, um, I did go and see Adam Lambert versus the winner, Chris Allen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like live. Really? And that was really, yeah, I did see that it was really fun. And I had a picture with, um, I have one, I wonder if I can find it, with um, Adam Lambert. Um, but it was very nice. He was very nice. Um, like, it just went down so fast, yeah. didn't it? It, it really was like they just dropped. like kept up using up all of America's talent. And now they're just like, we need more babies in America who can sing because we don't have enough good contestants. But we're going to yeah, still keep the show going. It was weird. It was so weird. But I thought the first season was so fun, and you really were, you really wanted people to succeed. And the yeah. second season was fun still. I mean, I think it is like it, it really, what it really is like a, and then occasionally Every, you get like a blip, and then yes, <laughs> exactly though. Um, uh, I think American Idol. I think I would give a. Uh, Fuck, this is hard. It's, I'm, like, stuck between a B and a C. Because, like, I think it's culturally fun. But in my heart, C. I, like, it doesn't enjoy yeah. it as much anymore. Um, well, in Canada, 
um, we had it too. And I happened to know somebody who got to the finale. Oh, cool. Um, and she wanted to lose so badly because when it happens is when Those you contracts. get to the, when you get to the final three, they show you the contract. She read the contract and it's basically like giving up your soul. Like she was a yeah. singer. She's a folk singer songwriter. And she found out like she wouldn't be able to do her own music. She wouldn't be able to do all this stuff. Um, so if you look at her, like her announcement, they announce the other guy and she cheers and then hugs him. Yeah. She's I like, should, yes! I should see if I can find it. Like, it's like, that. it's the most, icon like, in my opinion, one of the most iconic, like, um, second place finishes because like, they you, wanted it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I'm trying to think of something that was similar. Oh, like when I think of like drag race, um, uh, contracts are crazy. Like even just getting on the show that they have, like they own your life for like at least yeah. a year, but that's what most of those reality shows. And like, because I was working as an actor too, it made it really hard for me to really want to go and go for it. Cause then I was like, I don't think I'll be able to audition for anything. Yeah. Like they do really own your soul. Cause I think part of their thing is that they can actually like straight up tell you that like, you're coming back on the show. Yes. And you can't say no. No. It's you weird. You basically have to, like, they're, I think they're, like, reasonable enough where it's like, hey, like, I have a funeral to go to. They're going to be like, okay, but right. you have to come the next episode. <laughs> no, but it's like, it, it is like they they own you. You are owned by that network. And I think that's crazy to me. Yeah. Like, okay. WoW owns those queens. They really do. Um, so this is Teresa's Carico. I love this already. Um, so this was the final two. So it was her and Kaylin Porter. Um, I think this was season one or season two. Territory. And Zach said, you stepped out and you took some risks. risks blah, 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 blah. You, You're going to be a fine rock. This has been from around a Friday minute ago. Morning, the newspapers are Kaylin say, Porter played the fiddle. Prince, crown king. And you cannot tell me. She won. She won. She was so excited she got second. Like, Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? I am dying. Because, yeah, she's yes. like, I, I remember right before they, like, had to go and film, she was back, and she's like, I saw the contract. I do not want to win. She's like, that is so, so she was telling everybody from Saskatchewan where I live, she's like, don't vote for me. Do not vote for me. Because oh my God. she's a singer-songwriter, and she didn't want to lose her ability to, like, that was the smartest move. Music. Um, Sometimes losing a reality show helps you win. And like she does, she doesn't have a huge music career now, but at least she's happy. <laughs> exactly. That's all that matters. Just be happy. Just um, be happy. Yeah, and she was literally just like, "Yes." <laughs> um. Okay. Next show. Um. America's Got Talent. <gasps> oh. Sorry, that was my Raina from Story of Seasons impression that I always do when I first say, oh. Um, I don't know why. Um, uh, America's Got Talent. The thing is, like, I think that show is consistently kind of stays more fun than American Idol does. Yes, you know what 100%. I mean? There's something similar, but, like, there's something more fun because you don't actually have to be a singer. You don't yep. actually have to have, like, a specific talent. And yeah was more fun i don't know the hope yeah. the judges were fun always never like i hate this like i like yeah. heidi klum i like mel b i like howie mandel simon's yeah. fun um i don't necessarily like love it so i'm gonna give it a b nice i actually worked on canada's got talent yeah um, how was that and i got i used i had to work with them in the variety room uh -huh. So that's the room where, like, anybody who doesn't sing or dance has to go to. And it was the best time. I got to see a guy who did ice sculptures with a blowtorch. Oh. <laughs> oh. That's um, the talent I want. Yeah, it was a really fun show. Um, But, like, long-ass days. Like, we would work 12 to 16-hour days. Yeah, no. Um, no, not fun. But it was cool. <laughs> Wait, what, like what great memories like at the time I'm sure exhausting yeah. but you're like I can't believe I got to see I had that to watch, shit like we got to watch the it's a Filipino traditional dance where they use these bamboos um, and they dance Beautiful. through them while they're like slamming them together like they have these huge things they like smash them on the floor and smash them together to make the beat of the song um, oh, but like, so if it's like you're, dangerous and if fun. you're off for a second they smash your foot 
and it was fucking cool. <laughs> are high in that dance. Yeah, I appreciate that actually, though. Um, Dancing with the Stars. Ugh. So I think like the first season again was like a phenomenon at the time. Like people loved it. Like, and it was yeah. like two random people in the finals. Like one I think was pretty famous. The other one was like some sort of like soap star. I think. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember, but I liked the season with um, <laughs> Stacey Keebler because I'm a big WWE fan. <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm like, yeah, Stacey Keebler. That's who I was pretending to be closeted for when I was younger. <laughs> um, I'm not even kidding. I went to WWE Raw for one of my birthdays and I had a sign that said something about, I love you, Stacey, or something like that. Aww. Um, yeah. When I was just, I just wanted to be Stacy, you know. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> she got legs. So I really, there was moments of the show that I really liked, but I think overall, I never want to watch it. So I'm giving it a D. Well, the thing is, like the older seasons, it used to be like if you were on it, you had no idea how to dance, and now they're like professional dancer, right? Competing in the show about people who don't know how to dance. With this, and then there's some people who's like a random person who really doesn't know how to dance, yeah. And you're like, God, yeah. Um. It's a it's 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 a choice. Um, there's actually a drag queen who I really look up to locally, um, who's named after Lita, the wrestler. Oh, <laughs> love it! I love it. I'm a big big WWE fan, or uh, just wrestling in general. Yeah. Project Runway. Oh, that was so good, actually, and it consistently stayed good. I think, and like a lot of people thought it got worse, and I'm sure it did, but like really. The formula was good. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just a good-ass formula. Um, make it work. Like, come on. That was so... Tim Gunn, everything. Heidi Klum, everything. Um, All-Star seasons were pretty fun with... Um, who was it? Alyssa Milano. <sighs> um, I love her. Uh, and so, I like, I thoroughly enjoyed it consistently. I'm going to give it an A. Side note, if I can meet any celebrity right now, it would probably be Alyssa Milano. I love it. See? See? Um, I don't know what that show is. Uh, the is biggest it loser. Boss? No, it's worse. Um, see what it is. Yeah. Oh my god. Biggest loser. Biggest loser. I think that show was problematic as fuck. Yep. Um, uh, I did when I was younger enjoyed watching it though. I remember I've seen yep. some of the seasons and some of the episodes, but I can't tell you a single contestant from the show. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna give it a D because I don't like the messaging yeah it's like the swan like the swan i fucking when it was airing loved it now as an adult i'm like how fucking dare this show get pushed yeah it was so fucked up it's a great british bake-off oh so fun soggy bottom um uh, it's it's so cute it's actually like a reality competition show that is so precious you love everyone no the most like wholesome asshole. show ever <laughs> it really is and there's so many sweet little like homosexuals that you're just like you got this you sweetie um, Take that muffin but, <laughs> yeah you got it but they're also it's also like it's cute but it's also like not always like the most fun uh, you know because it's like just like just your cake cute. just like some of their cakes it can be kind of dry it, oh my god <laughs> no but it was good like there's moments of like i appreciate it for it being different than all the other freaking reality shows up there that makes me want to raise it up higher yeah then probably of like how much i actually enjoy it yeah because yeah it was it's i i think i'm going to give it I'm stuck between a C and a B again because I think it's, I appreciate it because it's so sweet, but my problem with it is that it isn't always the most. Would you consider it more like the bachelorette or bachelor? You know what? I'm going to consider it more like, um, I'm going to put it, I'm going to give it a C. Okay. Um, oh, you got to put that big brother back down to B though. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want that up in that S tier. Sick. There we go. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, the voice. I actually really enjoy the voice. Yes. And I think it's more fun than American Idol. Melanie Martinez uh, came from there. Um, oh, yes. Charlotte sometimes came from there. Like, some really impressive, in my opinion, artists came from there. Yes. Um, yes. And I like that the point of the show is 
they let the artist cover songs but make it their own a lot more yes yes yeah. and i think it's just the. Uh... It's entertaining. I enjoy the banter between judges. I think they do a good job with that. I think that's always fun. So yeah. I think I'm going to give it a B because I enjoy it way more than um, American Idol. That's fair. Um, well, X Factor is hard. X Factor, which is basically just America's Got Talent, but risky. It is. <laughs> it is. But X Factor has produced so many amazing groups. Yep. Um, well, like they have One there. Direction. One Direction. One, yeah. Yep. Of um, Fifth Harmony. Yep. Um, and I loved Fifth Harmony, but I just don't think the show is necessarily. I think what they what they create is good, but I don't know if it's necessarily super fun. I think I liked Demi Lovato, and was Demi Lovato on that one? That's yes. Like, was she? Or was she on America's Got Talent? I get them all. I'm getting them confused. I think. I thought she was uh, Nickelodeon. Um, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um uh, so I think X Factor, I'm gonna give it a C. I just okay. think it's fine. Top Chef. Okay, so the reason why I think Top Chef is more enjoyable than um the Great American oh Great British American Jesus. Great British Bake Off. Because I've watched a lot of the seasons, but there's also, it has a little bit more joy in my heart because me and my friend used to watch it and we used to pretend like if we were on the show, it would just be us going, um, everyone's like rushing around the kitchen and then it's just us going to the microwave, putting a bag of popcorn in there, pushing <laughs> buttons. <laughs> and then you see everyone freaking out, just me going, waiting for the popcorn to be made and <laughs> everyone's freaking out. And then they're like, they get to us and then they eat the popcorn and they're like, that was delicious and all the other contestants are like what so it has like this ridiculous <laughs> side to it yeah. that i is not real but i it's real it in your heart. heart exactly so it gets a b for me because also i think a lot of the contestants were good reality tv show people people all right um so these will all these Ian's tier list will all go into my Discord where people can you know, discuss what they liked about it. If they disagree, they will be there forever in eternity. Um, yeah, good. So Read people me. will see them um, and can you know give their own opinions. There is one show that I definitely recommend, though, that it's in Canada. I believe somebody bought the rights for it in America, but then the Panini happened, so it never got yeah. taken over to Britain or to the UK, which is The Launch, which I heavily recommend people watch. Um, so The Launch had, was a very interesting format. So what they do is they take singers and bands mm -hmm. and stuff like that, and there's, I believe, four or five. <gasps> oh, I have episode. heard of this. Yes. And what they do is they actually have a songwriter and producer give them a song that's already written and go mm -hmm. make it your own. Got it. So then they compete to have the best version of that song. Um, I love that. Are you kidding me? I think that's so... I think that's just like a better... Yeah, singer songwriter kind of reality and, show and than a lot of these. That's what it is. Is like you see the same song performed by four different people. Yeah, um, which one had the best and interpretation? Which has the best? Like um, the song. There was one that was done by um, One Republic, and oh, cool. Sugarland uh, did a song with them, and they it's called uh, "Ain't Easy," and it was done by this really queer couple from Ontario, and it's amazing and like <laughs> there was other people who competed and i was like how dare you compete with the gays um and camila cabello is actually the person who wrote the song oh my god um so yeah like they got these like big names to write the songs and then they're just like give these nobodies the chance to do them that's so cool oh, yeah that seems like so much more it's the coolest fun. boy george did one of the songs beborexia like they're good names that make these songs so i definitely Legit. even if you don't watch the show just like listen to the cut like listen to the songs and they're so good so oh, good amazing amazing um, it was the genius it did come into me it is the genius for the <laughs> south korean didn't you say too that you'd like remember it right at the end <laughs> random i'll be like there it is there it is there um, it is so yeah it's it's a really good show i definitely recommend it um, 
is there so for everybody who's watching thank you so much for watching this um is there anything that you kind of wanted to close off about ian um watch more reality tv so i get more content you know push it no i'm kidding um no this has just been so fun i love talking about anything reality tv i love watching the oldies i love going back <laughs> watching some old road rolls real world making the band three and so it's just been nice <laughs> oh my to, like, god making the band making remember the band. when uh, uh... The Pussycats had the reality TV show. Oh my show. god, yes. But then they didn't actually join the Pussycat Dolls because, after they won. <laughs> because they disbanded the band. <laughs> so weird. Uh, that was I loved that one, though. There was someone from Making the Band that ended up on that show, too. And I was like, that's so freaking funny. <laughs> um, yeah, it's reality TV's a lot. <laughs> yeah. It is, but it's just fun, and I appreciate. I'm so thankful that you asked me to come and do this. It's been so fun. Yeah. Um. So, I want to thank, um, actor, streamer, international superstar, and model, Ian Watson from Twitch TV's. It's Ian Watson for being with us today. <laughs> also, the Elwood competition winner. Oh, I oh my God! That. Yes, yes, I remember that to be the next L Woods on Legally Blonde's Broadways, um, <laughs> like on Broadway. It's so, so that was actually a really good one too. Yeah, I miss those ones where it was a Broadway competition. Um, oh yeah. So we are going to be ending the podcast portion of the stream here, but don't go away because even though the stream is over, it'll be starting up again. Where me and Ina are going to play some um, Debbie Delay. Do, 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 boom 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 um, it'll be really fun it'll be really yeah, i'm excited if somebody wants to join us you can definitely do so um but i want to thank everybody who listened and if you're leaving now remember that you are valid you are valuable and you are so very loved and i will actually get the thing up there because i realized the last two episodes glitched out and didn't get uploaded properly <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, we're going to take about five, ten minutes for, like, me and Ian to, like, take a break. And we'll be right back. Yeah. Love it. Bye. Woo!